Well, good morning, beautiful people. And first, let me start off by saying thank you for the overwhelming good feedback on the last couple of videos. And also, so nice to see the comments interacting with each other and helping each other out. Um, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And we also hit a thousand subscribers, which is mind blowing to me. I know I said it would, there was gonna be another video, um, but I had to drop this one because of just the overwhelming feedback and the thousand subscribers, um, which is insane to me. I even had a guy named Nico send me a screen capture of him being one, number 1000. Awesome. But for this video, I thought we're gonna edit some photos in Lightroom and I'm gonna give you a glimpse behind the curtain so you can see how I edit my photos. You can follow along at home on your desktop or on your mobile. And then the end, at the end of everything, you can save the settings as a preset. So basically you get a free preset out of this. So I wanted you to see and follow along uh, how I'm doing things instead of just handing you a free preset. Hope you're down with that. Let's get into the editing. Okay, so I've selected five photos that we're gonna use for the edit. And these are some photos I took on a walk a couple of days ago when I didn't even plan on taking any photos, but fortunately enough, I had my camera in my bag, um, but I only had the 85 mil on a crop sensor, um, which gives 127 uh, millimeter focal length. So the resolution um, is maybe not the highest and the pictures were a little bit hasty because that was not my main priority. But when I got home and looked through the photos, I was actually very happy with these ones. Um, so I figured we'll use them for the edit. Now, let me show you them real quick. We have a little Bambi. We have a chariot. We have a close-up of the horse. We have a little lighthouse, which is an iconic place, 30 kilometers north to Copenhagen. And we have this majestic creature, which is a kronjade in Danish. Um, I think it's red deer in English. Well, let me know in the comments if that's a red deer or not. So for this edit, I already know what I want. I want to create a edit that sits somewhere in the middle between fall season and winter season. Like the darker days are upon us, um, winter is coming, all that jazz. So I want to want to implement a lot of blues, um, very moody. Also a little bit darker. Now the pictures are a little bit darker. Well, it was getting uh, darker when I took the pictures as well and it was very cloudy. So what I like to start off with is um, we'll draw a little S-curve, crush the blacks a little bit, pull this one down and pull this one up again a little bit. Maybe something like this. And this is the whole thing, right? With, with editing photos, you go back and forth and see what works. But Let's start off with, let me just do this a little bit there, and like that. Now I also want to flat the image a little bit. Um, so I'll drag out some vib uh, vibrance and some saturation um, because we're going to use, um, we're going to skip a couple of steps and go to color grading and do a blue overlay or a blue grade um, to give it this blue tone. Uh, and I really would like to have like a, f a flat picture with a lot of a lot of moodiness to it if that makes sense so we're gonna go to color grade and this is maybe not the right um, way normally like in the order to go about it but because I already know what I want this will work and sometimes you just have to trust the process so let's do something like this so we'll only do the shadows maybe a little bit on the midtones as well like that maybe it's a little bit too much let's drag it down to well, 18 and shadows uh, sorry the midtones will do a little bit there something like that you can already see that it's starting to get like cooler, like colder uh, in the image. And that's the look I'm going for right now. Um, we don't need to do anything about the highlights. Okay. Let me do this real quick for the people that are watching with the OCD. It depends. Som sometimes I crop and uh, rotate at the end, sometimes at the start. I think this is fine. 
Now the exposure is quite good, uh, evenly lit, maybe a little bit up the shadows and the highlights we can drag it down to create a little bit more moodiness and darkness it's like a minute slider you're going down and it's getting later in the day something like that see it's already starting to look very moody and very cold winterish vibes here before after now let's play around with the colors now I know I don't want any purples and magentas um, and preferably also no reds in ca um, for this edit. So we're going to drag the saturation down on the magentas and purples because I already know that what I want and I don't want that in the edit. Um, and the reds I'm going to drag it more to the orange side so in case we bump into some reds they fit the profile a little bit better. Okay, so now we're going to come to the blues and I want to drag that a little bit down maybe somewhere around here the luminance a little bit down as well and you can slowly see the adjustments this a little bit too I would rather have it more to the blue side than the teal side so it's going to be more of a blue um, yellow edit maybe instead of an orange teal if that makes sense something like this greens we don't really have any greens the yellows we do have some around here but saturate a little bit more make it make the lighthouse pop a little bit let's also drag the orange a little bit and now it's getting too orangey for my taste. Some, somewhere around this. I think this is starting to look very, very much like what I pictured in my mind. Now, a lot of times, <clears throat> excuse me, now a lot of times with um, these moody type edits, people go for, um, go for the vignetting tool, which is totally fine and uh, which really gives it dramatic effect and uh, I can fully understand that, but I'm lately I've not been a fan of the vignetting tool just because it's very locked on. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Like it's only on the center, right? You can you can change the midpoint a bit and the, the roundness and the feather. But um, for these kind of edits, see if I do this. Uh, oh, sorry. If I do the vignetting, you can see it's getting darker on the sides as well. And that's something I don't want for this edit. So normally I would go for a uh, I would make a mask and I will take a linear gradient and for example pull it here and then just drag the exposure down a little bit maybe get highlights a little bit and dark uh, blacks a little bit down to really focus focus the eyes of the viewer onto the lighthouse uh, and not the well empty space dead space around it what we can do as well we can add another mask and do one in the top maybe just not that strong maybe just pull a little bit of the clouds back into it maybe up the contrast a little bit see this looks nice I like this just a little bit and we don't have any of this darkness on the sides uh, which I like I'm actually very happy with this edit already, I must say. Before, after, this is kind of close to uh, what I uh, was going for. So normally I would do like, okay, first edit, happy with this, hit Control C, copy the settings, and then I would paste it onto the next photo and see how it works. And it already looks good, but there is still a lot of things we can do with this photo. Also because this photo is different. There's a lot more colors. We have a lot more greens um, in this color. Let me do it like this. Are we happy with this? There. And same goes for this one as well. We can do a linear gradient. I always like to do this. This is something I probably do uh, well, I would say 95% of the time, if I take a shot low to the ground, I'll try to 
implement a linear gradient just to get the focus away from the ground and to the actual subject. Maybe a little bit like this. Yeah, I think that looks good. Um, now let's get back to the colors. And this is what I mean. It's a lot of going back and forth between the settings um, and the edits. See what I like. And I think that's very, I don't know, I feel like it's very soothing and very, very meditative um, to edit photos. So I want the, the greens also to be a little bit more dramatic like this. Now for the orange right here, I still want them to pop a little bit more like in the background. I think this looks good like that. Um, I think this already looks good. Maybe the greens are a little bit too much. Now let's drag down the highlights all the way so we get this a little bit darker. And I think the whole image could be darker. And I know what you're thinking, like, what are you doing? You're ruining the, the subject and everything. Now, this is where we're gonna use the mask tool. Um, and maybe you have heard this or seen this, or maybe you haven't. Um, the new Lightroom update has this cool feature, uh, select subject, um, which is taken from Photoshop um, and implemented into Lightroom. And you can see within no time you have your subject selected. Instead of doing it hand, uh, like by hand, the computer does it for you almost perfectly. You can see still it selected some uh, some of the branches right here. Um, so we want to subtract that. We're just going to click on the minus, use the brush, do the flow all the way up to the top. And we're just going to paint over the red spots and take that away from the mask. So it's like Photoshop, right? When you make a mask, it's exactly the same. We have a little bit here. I'll take the flow a little bit down for this one, just to be sure. Like that. Now what we can do, we can drag the exposure up just a little bit. Oh, let me select the mask again. And drag the exposure up a little bit, not too much though, because you can quickly overdo it. But maybe somewhere around here, also bring the shadows a little bit up and the highlights. Not too much. See, this is looking very nice already. Before and after. I really like this. Even think that the sky could be um, a little bit darker. Maybe we just make the whole image a little bit darker and then bring the layer up. Maybe a little bit more of the shadows here. Like that. Yes. I really like that. And I think these go hand in hand right now. So from this on, uh, this one on, we're gonna do Control C to copy the settings, and we're gonna go onto the next page, uh, next photo, and hit Control V again, of course. Now this we don't need the exposure. We can drag it a little bit up. I think this looks very good, but I still would like to have a little bit more orange in the background right there. Now I've already thought about what I want to do with the images, so. That makes it a little bit easier for the video. Maybe just bump it all the way up. Oh, like that and the yellows as well. Luminance. Drag this one down more to the orange. Yeah, this looks cool. I like that. Maybe I even want a little bit more blue in the image. So we'll go back to the color grading. And we'll go to the shadows and just drag the saturation a little bit up, maybe a little bit over 20. Somewhere around there. Yeah, I think that looks cool. I feel kind of like Bob Ross doing this, like saying, I'm going to add a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But it's fun though. And editing should be fun. Now, once again, the vignetting would be nice to use for this one, but there's one problem. We have also a little bit of the subject on the side, so we don't want that one. 
we won't won't, won't uh, we don't want the the right side also to be uh, darkened by the uh, vignetting. So what I like to do for that is use the radial gradient, and I'll make it really big and make the feather okay big as well. And the good thing is that this one you can place to uh, place wherever you want it. So let's invert it so it only gets the edges. Now you can see the parts that it's going to select, going to apply the settings to, and this actually looks pretty darn good. And if we're going to drag the exposure down a little bit and the blacks as well, and the highlights as well on the back, I'm just going to drag everything a little bit down. Look at this. Maybe even a little bit of this exposure down. That looks cool. I'm happy with that. Before, after. So now we've got a sequence. Okay, let's get to the majestic creature, Red Deer, hopefully. Um, so we're going to copy uh, these settings and paste them on to this photo. Now you can see that it doesn't really work on this one um, as much, or at least it needs a lot of tweaking. Um, I'm going to drag this a little bit down. I also want maybe the blacks to be a little bit more present. Yeah. And we can do a linear gradient as well, somewhere around here. Maybe even make it a little bit higher up, like that. Take the saturation a little bit out of there. Implement a little bit more blacks. Awesome. Okay. So for this, maybe bump the contrast just up a little bit. And I think we need to do something about the greens right here. So these greens are a little bit too too present. So I want to drag down the saturation. Luminance like this. See, now it's starting to look cool. Also this one, I want to drag the saturation a little bit. Like that, maybe. Something like this. Let me also do this. I'd like to get a little bit of that tree in the background. Excuse me for mumbling uh, from time to time. It's like when I focus up, I can do two things at once. And of course, especially for this photo, we're going to select the subject uh, with the new feature. Like that. And here you can see we're missing some things, so what we're going to do, we're going to click on the plus sign and the brush tool, and we're going to add some, uh, some mask. You can just use your scroll wheel to uh, decrease the uh, brush size. Now let me just fast forward real quick when I'm doing these, what's it called, antlers, the thing on the, the bones on the head. So I'll be back in a sec. Okay, and there we are. So now we've masked the red deer completely and we're gonna do a little bit of the exposure as well. Maybe a little bit of contrast. Also give it a little bit of saturation, just a little tad. Bring up the shadows. Now for this image, probably I wanna do the whole image a little bit darker and bring the subject up just a tiny bit. A little bit of the highlights and the shadows. Turn the blacks a little bit down. Give it a little bit more contrast so it really stands out in the picture. What are we thinking? Maybe overall Something like this. Of 
think actually this looks very good. Maybe we can do a little bit of darkness in the sky as well here in the corner. You could also use a, a brush size if you want. Just bring the brush all the way up and just draw a little bit like this. And then we're just going to drag the exposure down a little bit here. We can add on to that if we want like that and maybe a little bit there and right there. So what are you thinking? I think this looks pretty good. And we're going to copy and paste it to the last one. Oh, I like these colors. Maybe we can even get a little bit more vibrance here. Um, also get the yellows a little bit more to the orange side. I think for this one there's a little bit too much blue. I'm going to drag that a little bit down. And of course we're going to select the subject for this one as well. Let's see how it does. That looks perfect. Once again, exposure a little bit up, shadows a little bit, blacks a little bit down, highlights maybe a tad more like that. Maybe we can do the overall image a little bit lighter. And let's do a linear gradient on the bottom. Again, like I said, this is something I do often. And it creates a more dramatic effect. Now I also want a little bit of the sky to be darker. So I can do a linear gradient from the top as well and drag the highlights a little bit down, the exposure a little bit. A little bit like that. I think this looks sick. They're very dark pictures, but they're very moody and they fit together in a series. Now you can take one of these images, for example this one, and if you would uh, click on presets and you hit the little plus sign, now you have all your settings, you name it, thousand subs, thank you, preset, save, and it's saved. Now, and you, then you can use this for the next time as your guideline, as your preset, and then you can tweak the things and the settings to your liking and to the photo. photo. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with that. And I think it went quick. Maybe the video is, what, 20 minutes, 20 minutes long, something like that. Hope you enjoyed. I'm happy with this. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you learned something. Um, you can leave a like if you learned something or thought it was nice. Uh, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. It was so good to see um, the reaction of the last couple of videos and people answering each other's questions and uh, me joining along as well. So thank you for that. If you're not subbed, um, please hit the subscribe button. Welcome to the family. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much. See you in the next one. Peace.